Oh boy. <laughs> Screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Justin. All Girl right. power. They can't even spell. My shirt. Girl up. Or I smell can't like even paint. spell. You smell like what? Paint. Mm, attractive. I'm sure Dylan loves that. Yep. I'm going to go work out after this, too. Kyle, I started kickboxing. You would love it. It's Jesus. super fun. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Now, with the latest NASCAR local, regional, touring, and international racing news and views, here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. I'm Hannah Newhouse, joined as always by my co-host of Kyle Rickey. And Kyle, it was a busy weekend. Not only you, but a lot of the drivers up in the Northeast World Series weekend at Thompson and uh, big car count, lots of action, lots of wrecks racing in the season finale of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, where Justin Bonds, you're once again a NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion. My favorite weekend of the year, Mother Nature could not have been more kind to us. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 330 plus race cars over all the different divisions that ran including the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. They had a good field. Uh, nearly 30 cars took the green flag. Justin claimed the win. Uh, but per usual in the season finale, I feel like that the first couple of races at Thompson each season go with two or three cautions, not the season finale. Uh, we had, I think, 10 caution flags, slow the event, a couple of red flags. Uh, a couple of drivers got beat up uh, pretty good, but everyone's going to be okay. And it was Craig Lutz claiming the win. Uh, a late race pass on John McKennedy, uh, Ron Silk, part of that lead battle as well. They swapped it back and forth uh, several times throughout the event. Craig's third career win in just the last uh, year and a month or so. So, uh, you know, that team starting to, to figure out the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and become a contender each and every week. And, uh, yeah, great race. Doug wrecked, uh, looking for another championship. He would have needed help from Justin, who only needed to finish 23rd or better. And then ultimately, Doug was involved in a mid-race incident, knocking him out and all but handing the championship to Justin. So it was a good day, a great, uh, great crowd. Uh, I think we hit our 50% capacity here in Connecticut in the grandstands. And um, yeah, another great way to end the season. Sad, though, as we only ran, what, two or three events at Thompson this year. And might I add, I was not only sad that I couldn't be there for World Series, I've gotten to go to a couple yeah. over the span of living out here on the East Coast, but you didn't make it any better by tweeting at me with all of the pictures of the dogs. I had no idea that. that, that um, you know I that? Had, I know. I, I, it was raining here. It was disgusting. Yeah. I'm stuck inside. Didn't get to go to a racetrack this weekend. And Kyle's tweeting at me with pictures of dogs and race cars. And I knew... You know, you, you live right up the road from Charlotte Motor Speedway, and I was checking in on all the happenings at the Roval and watching them hydroplane down the back straightaway on Saturday, especially. So I knew, uh, you know, you were you were probably in much worse off weather situation than we were up here, where it was 75 degrees on Saturday and not a cloud in the sky. And who knew that, you know, we allowed or they allowed dogs in the pits at Thompson, like to the extent I've never seen, you know, a dozen or more dogs just hanging out. Yeah, they always, whenever we go to Canada for the Pinty Series and the trucks, they always have a lot of dogs, but they have that road course style paddock, so they've got the space for the dogs, um, so it's cool to see that. I will say, I was tucked inside over the weekend watching all of the racing. Dylan, on the other hand, worked not only ex the Xfinity race on Saturday, yeah. but then had a 35-minute turnover and had to work the IMSA race Saturday oh, night. Still drying uh, out. He's still probably a little soggy, if we're being honest with yeah. you. Also, I want to send a PSA out to any Kyle Ricky fans because Kyle doesn't get fan mail anymore, but apparently I do. So what do you mean anymore? Yeah. I never got fan mail. <laughs> I told you I'd send you a send you a hero card. You just have to start texting me back before we record the show. So one thing I'm I need is a Hannah Newhouse trading. I have the hero card. I want the trading card that you have. Yeah, I want one too. Maybe if you went skydiving, you'd have fans. Well, maybe one day, maybe yeah. one day, not yeah. today. Yeah. We both know someone that likes to skydive. That'd be pretty cool. She and she plunged 14,000 feet the other day. <laughs> so, Oh, speaking of skydiving, 
We're, 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 watch this transition. Sam Mayer I'm, I'm waiting for it. QA at second. Arkham Menards East Series Championship uh, capped the season off down in Pensacola, Florida at Five Flags Speedway with a win. Back-to-back championships for Sam Mayer. It's pretty safe to say, Kyle, when Sam Mayer and the GMS team are at the racetrack, he will be in contention for the win. And, and it's so interesting to see. We've talked about it the last two years. Sam is still so young. They announced with Junior Motorsports yeah. that he'll run a partial season next year in Xfinity, full-time in 2022. I feel like he should have been Xfinity racing two years ago. But he's not old enough. But he's not old enough. So it's so crazy to see this success and how he's matured and how well he competes. And he's 17. And it's going to be a while before he turns 18 and already has two East Series championships under his belt. K&N East last year, ARCA East this year. I think he won five of the six races, including last weekend. And in that sixth event, he finished second. So a near perfect season for Sam, who led 31 laps over the weekend at Five Flags Speedway um, to, to claim the win, held off uh, Corey Heim, Ty Gibbs, Tanner Gray, Grant Enfinger in the race. And he led the most laps, uh, 135, I believe, uh, laps led for Grant Enfinger. So um, nice to see Grant in the field. And he won the championship, uh, Sam Mayer, that is, by 32 points over Ty Gibbs. So um Good race, good field. Uh, I was talking with series director Chris Wright uh, the other day, and he said the last 40 laps of that race, they were racing like it was the last lap. A lot of lead changes and a lot of change for positions in the top five. So a uh, great way for the Arca Menards East Series season to, to conclude. Yeah, Derek Griffin had a good run there at the tail end of that as well. Battling for that lead, got into it with Corey Heim, who did come home in second in that race. Uh, so... They put it all out there. They all knew that it was pretty much the end of the season for them. A couple ARCA East races still left, including Kansas this weekend. I believe Haley Deegan pulling double header yeah. duty, running her truck debut. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. But before then, uh, let's dial up Justin Bonson, your 2020 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion, and talk about uh, winning a second championship here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top 9 miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTire.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. The NASCAR Whelan Modified Tour capped off their season this past weekend at Thompson. And once again, Justin Bonsignor finds himself on the championship board. Justin joins us now. First off, congratulations, back-to-back -back championships, uh, the excitement. Wasn't back to back, but two out of three, right. <laughs> two out of three is not bad. Uh, thanks for having me on. First of all, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys again. And um, yeah, capped off, uh, you know, a shortened season, but all, overall a great season for our team. Uh, you know, finished in the top five every race, led laps at all but one, had three wins, a couple poles. So uh, it was a really good season. And we were just ha fortunate enough to, uh, to end it on Sunday on a successful note and, and celebrate. Talk about the race on Sunday before we talk about the season as a whole. Uh, a wild event, a um, lot of lead swapping there for, for most of the event, especially the second half of the race. Kind of bring us through what uh, you saw from your seat as you had a pretty good view of it all sitting there in third, fourth place. 
Yeah, you know, we qualified third, um, which was a little bit of a disadvantage. I was hoping to be fourth, honestly. Um, faded pretty much back to the, the 10th or 12th there in the, in the beginning, just couldn't get in line and, and didn't want to push the issue with people that knew I was racing for the points. You know, they, they, know, how, they know how I had a race that, that race, and they were being real aggressive. So, um, you know, worked our way back uh, from 11th or 12th up to the top five or six before the pit stop, had a great stop, get the lead there with about 50 to go. And uh, unfortunately for me, I just uh, I tried being John Force on that one restart with Lutz and uh, just gave him a little too much into one and he was able to take the lead away and then, you know, pinned on the bottom for a couple starts and, and faded back to third or fourth. Uh, real crazy at the end, you know, a lot of lead swapping back and forth. Guys were really getting aggressive there the last couple laps. You know, at that point, we already knew we had it clinched, but, um, you know, I wanted to make sure the car was going to roll to victory lane for the uh, for the championship. So, um, you know, not not our best showing at Thompson over the last couple of years, um, but all in all, it was still a good run. You know, anytime you can finish in the top five, that's a good day. Uh, we'll work on getting a little better for next year, but, um, you know, we're still really proud of uh, our day. And that being said, too, you have a lot of wins at Thompson, uh, consecutive wins over the last couple of years, uh, breaking that streak here. How tough is Thompson as a racetrack? One of the older racetracks on the series, but you clearly have it figured out. You'd mentioned getting pinned on the bottom. Um, how tough of a racetrack really is Thompson to figure out? Yeah, I mean, we've, um, you know, we've had good speed since Ryan Stone came on board a couple of years ago, and we've we won a handful of races in a row, uh, finished second. Actually, that was our worst finish, fourth. We had uh, seven wins and a couple seconds, and now fourth over a three-year stretch there. Um, it's just a tough racetrack. It's it's. You know, it's hard to, to start on the bottom. Like you said, you need to be in that preferred outside groove on a lot of restarts, and, and you could lose a lot of spots quick. And it's hard to pass when you're, you're, you're stuck, you know, fifth or sixth, and the guys are bumper to bumper. So um, it's it's a real, you know, position-based racetrack. But, um, you know, we run really well there. and But guys have caught up. You know, we, we haven't really had the dominant car during our stretches of wins there. We've kind of come in, and, and, you know, after the pit stop, we take the lead and have the best car at the end. So uh, guys have always been close. So, it just shows how close this series is uh, with people. If you miss, uh, if you miss the setup by just a little bit, or you're off a little bit on a, make a mistake like I did on a restart, guys are going to pounce on you and take advantage of it, and uh, that just shows the the depth of our series and how good everybody is. You said you wanted to to clinch it and have a car to to roll into to victory lane for the for the championship celebration, but. When you sit there uh, and you know you have to finish 23rd or better, there's 27 cars in the race. Do you do the math at all as cars drop out? Yeah, we, um, you know, we talked about it a little bit before. Um, talked about it after a couple guys got knocked out and you saw that they were done for the day. Um, we we kind of knew at a certain point we'd be okay to just race, um, you know, and we did. Once we got back into the top five or six and we were able to get our tires on, I thought we had made enough adjustments on the car during the pit stop to, to have a race-winning car um just uh just missed it setup wise because we were you know we were not at worried about the points at all at lap 100 we we knew what we had to do um but i just just didn't have the car to go up there and contend for the win like those guys did and uh that kind of takes away from it so um at that point you know you just you just want to make sure you finish strong and finish finish with all the wheels on it and don't do anything stupid there's no point in tearing a car up for fourth or third or fourth you know what's the difference at that point so um you know we if anything, learned what we need to do to get better for next year or what we need to change. Um, you know, it's tough with the COVID this year. We They took away the option tire, which we've had for a couple of years, and that's honestly what we've been been winning on. Um, you know, when, after the pit stop, we come out and we're the best car on that tire. And the hard tire, with everything going on, they're a little harder than they usually have been because uh, we haven't raced as much. The tires are backlogged uh, with Hoosier. So um, it's just, just one of those deals. And um, we, we just got to hopefully either figure that out next year or hope the rules go back to how we like them. And with that championship, uh, John McKennedy snuck up there in that second spot, Doug Kobe coming home in third. Kobe made sure, though, he gave you about 24 hours rest before he hit you up on social media, <laughs> making sure you were still alive after celebration. Did you get a chance to, uh, to celebrate and take in the second championship? Yeah, sure. We, uh, we sure did. We went up to the Thompson Clubhouse afterwards, had a nice <laughs> dinner hung out at the bar uh, until they closed it down and then went out and hung out by some camp somebody's campfire for a little bit. But uh, yeah, Doug, um, I was giving him a little bit of a hard time because, uh, you know, we're hard, hard rivals and we race each other's guts out. But at the end of the day, we're, we were pretty good friends and uh, he didn't, he didn't come up and, and congratulate me afterwards. And uh, I was, I was pretty, pretty upset with him. And he texted me about, I don't know, four or five beers in while we we're at the clubhouse and it explained why it's because he was at the hospital so I gave him a good amount of crap for, for that, but I, I, gave, I forgave him. 
saying he had a pretty good excuse. I guess he had to get some stitches. So, um, yeah, I knew that, you know, whether he won or I won, the other person was going to take their shots with the asterisk uh, joke on Twitter. Um, I gladly will take the asterisk jokes when they're coming to me. That means I got the championship. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all in good fun. Uh, we have a text conversation back and forth with Ryan and Priest, and um, I could – air him out saying that the asterisk if it was on the other foot he would have been celebrating just like we did so but uh it's all good fun and um you know we're excited to keep battling with them guys and um you know he's got the upper hand still for at least four more years if we go on a, a crazy run but um you know it's uh it's a good good rivalry a lot of fun with them guys and um it's just a pleasure to be a part of and you and Doug are teammates in a couple of weeks. But we'll talk more about that in a second. Let's talk about the season, though, as a whole here. I know you thank Jimmy Wilson and Victory Lane uh, and all the officials behind the scenes to get you guys on the racetrack and get a schedule. I mean, what was it like for, for, for you? I mean, I think in, what, May or June, you weren't even sure if we we're going to race it all this year. And they somehow came up with a, a pretty good schedule that included racetracks that either the tour had never visited or wasn't scheduled to go to this year. Yeah, um, you know, like I said, in, in Victory Lane, Jimmy Wilson and everybody at NASCAR, all the officials, um, you know, NBC, everybody, Whelan, who I, I felt terrible, I forgot to thank in Victory Lane, um, everybody as a whole in this whole uh, series just did a great job putting things together, promoters of the racetracks. Um, you know, it, was, it wasn't very hard on me. You know, I'm very fortunate. Uh, our cars are based out of Connecticut. I'm on Long Island. Uh, Ryan Stone and, and my guys up at the Connecticut shop do an unbelievable job. They Obviously, we were ready to go before everything shut down, so it wasn't too much work to get ready for those races. Um, but once they started stacking them on a couple of, you know, a couple weeks in a row, back to back to back, uh, you know, really condense, you know, doing half a schedule in a quarter amount of time, uh, it, it was tough. But um, for me, it was, you know, just getting a car and go to the racetrack. So uh, all the all the credit and and everything goes to to Ryan and everything he leads uh, up in Connecticut, preparing our stuff and keeping our guys. Uh, motivated to come to the shop whenever they need to and, and keep everything going in the right direction. That's all on him. And, and obviously Ken Massa, my owner doing, doing all the legwork and uh, I get the easy part is showing up and, and running the car and, and uh, most times being successful with it because of how great they are. And looking at how we went into 2020, obviously we all were excited for a lot of schedule changes that had came, including the addition of Iowa Speedway. Iowa somehow got swapped out for White Mountain on multiple times, but taking into what they were able to put together this year with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, because we're seeing it in NASCAR, these one-day shows, practice some elimination. Is there anything that you've been able to take, whether it's the addition of White Mountain or maybe that alternate tire that you guys, you know, didn't have this year that you think could be applied to the 2021 season, um, you know, just with what we've learned this season? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as rule change, uh, they did a good job of, um, you know, maybe limiting crew guys or, or stuff like that. I think – I think those are all temporary things. I think the tire is temporary. Um, I think from that side of things, we pretty much kept things business as usual. The days were, the schedules were pretty much the same as far as the length of time at the track. I think they, they've done a great job with that over the years. And I think we, you know, stayed on par, on par for, for the most part this year, as far as that's concerned. The biggest takeaway I have is obviously we lost a few races just due to COVID, um, but we gained White Mountain. We gained a second date at Jennerstown. We got made an ad knock back on a schedule. Um, I think those those things like that are things that we can um, hopefully carry into the future and, and 2021 and, and so forth. And obviously, I think we'll get back to Martinsville's and, and all our normal tracks that we would usually go to. So I think that, you know, if, if things are back to normal, say, in 2021, we can have a great schedule from what the little bit of rumors I've heard is that it, it's it's shaping up on paper to be a good deal. As long as the governors and everybody let us go race in next spring, um, that's, you know, remains to be seen. But uh, I think the tour is in a good spot. I think Jimmy Wilson is doing a great job. Uh, Jimmy usually doesn't get a lot of credit, if any, from most people. And I think uh, more than anything, he deserves a lot of it this year. And everybody at NASCAR, uh, just they just worked their guts out. And, you know, we took a little bit of purse hits a little bit in the beginning, but they fought hard for us to make sure our purses stayed the same or just a slight bit under to make it work with the limited capacity crowd. So, um, you know, I just really can't say enough about Jimmy. He fought for us as competitors and um, to be able to get nine races and, in what, four, four months or so. It was pretty successful with all the limitations. You know, we could have had a lot more on paper. It's just, you know, the governors and, and the things going on right now just didn't allow for that. Yeah, a uh, tough year, uh, no doubt. We're seeing that in all of the, the regional series and 
Canada. I mean, it's been a weird year, uh, no doubt. You're not done yet. Uh, we alluded to it a moment ago. Uh, teammates with Doug Kobe in two weeks uh, for the tri track race at Stafford Speedway. Uh, how did that come together with Gary Casella and his team? Yeah, it actually, um, it's funny, Doug and I, or at least I didn't know if Doug, that Doug was pursuing something else. Gary had told me that uh, he had somebody he was talking to for the other car. Uh, he was going to work on some things with his crew to see if we could, if he could do two. Um, that all started actually from Ed Bennett, the, one of the series directors from Tri-Track, asked if I was interested. And, in, uh, well, he knew I was interested, and he offered a couple people that might be looking for a driver. And I uh, reached out to one. They weren't, you know, had a, already somebody scheduled. And uh, then I got in touch with Gary, and things snowballed real quick. Um, and then the day I was about to confirm everything with Gary, Doug put out his uh, little presser that same morning. Uh, I texted him privately. I said, well, this is going to get interesting this afternoon. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it all just kind of came apart or came together real quick. So, uh, honestly, I just uh, hope spoke to Gary a little bit ago. They had some engine troubles over the weekend. So we're back to trying to make sure that we can get both cars there. Um, I told them, you know, not to – don't stress for two weeks over me, you know, if, if they can only go with the one car and that's going to be their most successful option. I'm all for that. So uh, hopefully it all works out. I really want to run that race. It looks like it's shaping up to be something special. But, um, you know, obviously things are tough in racing and sometimes uh, might not always work out. But we're really hoping that it can. And um, we have another race scheduled at Riverhead for the ISO 300 with the 51 car. Um, so that's not done – with my normal stuff yet. So uh, we got one race. I haven't been able to run that race over the last bunch of years. Uh, it sucks. It's 20 minutes from home. And just the way the schedules work, we haven't been able to do it. So I'm excited to run there. Obviously, we didn't get to go there this year. And we've been very successful with Ryan there. Actually, Ryan's not lost a race since he joined our team there. So uh, hoping that we can continue that in November uh, before the winter kicks in. And that being said, uh, not done with the modified. Are you going to run indoor stuff, assuming they let it, uh, <laughs> let it happen this year? Uh, it's like you guys were like checking my phone before I got on the call. I actually put out a couple text messages to some people. Um, it sounds like things may open back up in time for, uh, for some stuff at, right after the new year. So I do have a call out to somebody with, uh, with some pretty good equipment. I don't know if anything will come of it, but uh, I took a year off from that. Um, kind of haven't raced much this year, so I'm not really burnt out or worn out from, from having to do it every week. So uh I'm probably going to just be burnt out by the time we get to next year, but that's the plan. I'm hoping to maybe do something. We'll see. Um, it's always fun racing indoors. It gets a little stressful at times, um, but we'll see what happens. Perfect. Well, again, congratulations, Justin. Uh, enjoy this championship. You got a lot of more racing on your plate, but uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you uh, in the next coming months. Uh, have fun with Doug Kobe too. I'm looking forward to watching that unravel on social media. <laughs> Yeah, that should be an interesting day. Hopefully it all works out for the both of us. And, uh, you know, if we do both get the race, hopefully we can have a good day for Gary and his guys. And gonna, I'm sure he'll have, be hanging out with his, some of Doug's normal pit crew, my normal pit crew mixed in with Gary's guys. It should be a good time. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me on. It's always means uh, that we're doing things well, if we can get to come talk to you guys. So uh, if we don't have, if we don't speak to you, have a good holiday season and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Again, guys, Justin Bonson, you're your 2020 NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour Champion. When we return here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, though, we will have your Wheel and Engineering Short Track Spotlight of the Week. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTire.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. This week's Whelan Engineering Short Track Spotlight of the Week. We talked about it over the last couple weeks out in Wisconsin. Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway recently just hosted uh, Oktoberfest. 
They opened in 1957 as a mile and a, or as a half mile oval dirt track. Lacrosse Speedway is a paved five eighths mile oval now with an inner quarter mile track located just 10 minutes from the shores of the Mississippi River in West Salem, Wisconsin. The track opened as a paved racing facility in the 1970s and has been a part of the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series consecutively since 1989. In 1972, Dick Trickle tied Ramo Stott for the national record of 58 featured wins in a season at lacrosse. In 2007, NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series national champion Steve Carlson had raced weekly at lacrosse since the 1980s. Kevin Nettleman is a 10-time track champion and the 1989 Great Northern Region champion. A name that a lot of people will find familiar, Ty Majeski raced weekly for several seasons, finishing a close third in the national standings in 2016. For nearly 20 years, it was Wisconsin's only NASCAR-sanctioned weekly facility. Aside from trickle winners of the track over the years have included names like Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, Johnny, Jay, and Jim Sauter, Daryl Waltrip, Ted Musgrave, Matt Kenseth, and Ty Majeski. Again, that is Lacrosse Fairground Speedway out in Wisconsin this week's Wheelin Engineering Short Track Spotlight of the Week. Wheelin designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelin product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelin is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Citywide to countryside. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry leading warranty to get you there, no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTire.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTire.com. Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. We talked about it at the beginning of the show this weekend, a busy weekend for a lot of racetracks around the country, including Kansas Speedway hosting a multitude of NASCAR's touring series, including the Arc Menard Series racing on Friday night. Kyle MRN will have coverage of that. Haley Deegan, we talked about it, pulling double duty, making her truck debut as well on Saturday. A lot of stories in the race on uh, Friday night, 8.30 Eastern time here on the Motor Racing Network to kick off, like you mentioned, a busy race weekend with the Kansas 150. Race 20 of uh, 20. They got all their races in somehow for the Arkham Menard Series, and, and good for them and good for all of their officials and Chris and getting a full schedule for, for those teams. Brett Holmes, the championship point leader by eight over Michael Self. Haley Deegan, a distant third, 61 back, but uh, she hits the national spotlight, as you mentioned, uh, the next day on Saturday at uh, 3.30 Eastern time here on the Motor Racing Network in the Gander Truck Series race, making her national debut with DGR Crosley Racing. I think it's a bit of a preview of what we might see in 2021 based on her video tweet that she sent last week. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like this was a deal that kind of came together last minute um for this race for her in Kansas and she alluded to it like you said in her social media announcement saying that this was more of a protocol race yes. saying that she was running this race specifically for approval in uh, regards to the 2021 season and so usually you get that approval by running a somewhat smaller track in a higher division so it could be like you said some insight into what we see Haley announce in the next couple months about her 2021 plans uh going to short tracks though hickory motor speedway pretty much rounded out most of their local series points a couple weeks ago but they are hosting this weekend one of the bigger late model races that they host each season the fall brawl usually bringing in a multitude of big late model stock division names. Uh, so that will be at Hickory Motor Speedway this up and coming weekend. They are allowing, I believe, minimal grandstand access. But again, they still do have turns three and four open for spectator parking. You can pull your truck in or your vehicle for just a flat rate and be able to watch some late model racing. Weather is supposed to be good. And we've got uh, national points starting to wrap up, Kyle. Yeah, and a lot of those Drivers up toward the top of the standings race at Hickory on a regular or semi-regular basis. Josh Berry le leads Division One by 26 over Peyton Sellers. Ryan Millington still third, 36 points back. Jacob Gady is fourth, 48 points back 
in Brian Roby, fifth, 52 points back. Uh, in Division Two, Jared Weston leads. Uh, he's a regular at Adams County Speedway. He leads by six points over uh, David, Green, uh, David Greenslip from uh, Lee USA Speedway and Claremont Speedway up in New Hampshire. So, uh, yeah, uh, tight among uh, the top couple of uh, contenders in Division Two. I'm not sure. I think it's only a week or two left because I think I feel like most racetracks are either having their final regular season event or have already hosted their final regular season event, like up here in the Northeast. I think about every racetrack up here is done now, with the exception of the big modified uh, tour type modified race at Stafford in a couple of weeks. Um, we're about done. So I assume there's other regions of the country that are also at that point. Yeah, well, you never know that it's fall down here in the Carolinas today. It's uh, 83 degrees and hot yeah. outside, humid from all the rain we got over the weekend. Uh, but across the country, a lot of other places are starting to get cooler temperatures and being pretty much forced to end their seasons here shortly. So uh, we'll keep everyone updated on those national points. Kyle, are you going to a racetrack this weekend? Yeah, um, I think Waterford Speed Bowl runs on Saturday night. Um, so again, they only have two events left. They started much later because uh, they were looking for people to, to run the facility once Connecticut was able to uh, open up and, and have spectators. Stafford obviously has the Arup family that never really stopped working. Um, Waterford's in a different situation uh, with management, so it took them a while to get up and running. So they're going to go into uh, the month of October a bit deeper than, than they have in the past. So we'll be there this weekend. A couple quick shout-outs. Langley Speedway 2021 schedule came out this week in Virginia. Ten events. Uh, they open up with their NASCAR program on April 3rd. Hampton Heat again on the schedule or back on the schedule for July 17th of next year. And also want to give a quick shout out to Stafford Speedway, uh, my home racetrack, StaffordSpeedway.tv, their streaming platform this year. 25% um, of every sale went back into the driver's uh, purse and point fund. Uh, they released the numbers today. $26,000 plus dollars, uh, went back to the drivers from their, NAS their five NASCAR uh, weekly divisions. So uh, good for Stafford Speedway. And you know maybe we'll see some other tracks jump on board and do something similar next year uh, if tracks have to remain at a 25% or 50% capacity, depending on what state they're in. Absolutely. And what a great initiative too. I mean, for Stafford to take that on and prove that they can do it and yep. prove that it is successful, you know, racetracks that draw in larger crowds or have weekly divisions such as your Hickory Motor Speedways or, um, you know, your Irwindale Speedways that race weekly and have larger divisions. Uh, what, a, what a great, you know, initiative for them to be able to do that. Bring in more car count, bring in more views to short track racing. So uh, looking forward to watching some of that this weekend as well as uh, all the action from Kansas. But we'll have uh, hopefully your ARCA Menards Series champion next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast to talk a little bit of championship racing. So for myself, Hannah Newhouse, Kyle Ricky, and producers Craig Moore, we will see you guys next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. You've been listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network, all rights reserved.